Are you live? Yep, we're ready. All right, what's up everybody? We're live on our YouTube page, or on Facebook. And yeah, if you guys do not know, I'm Jay Chacon, I'm the team leader CEO here. Next to me, I have one of my ALC members, and he holds the prospecting committee chairs, Hector Gutierrez. That's right, my name is Hector Gutierrez, those are here. That was off me, Jay. Oh, I know. I'm part of the Gutierrez team, um, so I'm here with my wife. Uh, and also an admin, and just recently we added a new ISA. Or this ISA, what its sole purpose is basically to just pound out phone calls and get us appointments. So super, super stoked to see where we're going, and you know, we're ready to fail forward. Not scared, you know, not scared of failing forward. But um, a part of what we're going to touch today is what, why we're even where we're at is because we've taken the time to do this for our business and kind of clarify where we want to go. 100% celebrating your room, uh, in this room, in your room, in your room, you should be in here, right? So all of you guys are here for a, a reason, so we're not going to waste your time, we're very direct with this. One thing I specialize in is something called CV, which is career visioning, which is the career visioning process. That's the hiring process that Keller Williams uses. So you guys, who's heard of the DISC test? Raise your hand. The DISC personality, who's heard of the KPA with Keller Williams? Keller Williams has its own assessment that you can take. Um, as a gift to some of you in this room, to be able to take that assessment. So if you guys can please sign in your names and write your emails on there, I'll send you guys a Keller Williams KPA assessment. So as a gift for being here and pouring in the time and value that we have here, um, I'm gonna give you guys that. How does that sound? Great. Pretty cool, right? Um, if you guys have taken it before, just scratch it out, or we'll just bring it back up. Um, if I could add something to yeah, that, Jay, it's super important to see what kind of, like a lot of us know what kind of personalities we are, Yeah. right? Everybody knows Jay is like freaking life of the party. She's freaking crazy. She's like, you know, she, you know she's a good time. She's a good time. I'm, I'm also a high D, but I'm a DC. So I'm more analytical. Like I, I like to get stuff done. I don't like to waste my time just like she does. But she's a high DI and I'm a high DC. So it's important to know where you, which personality type you guys fit into. So one, when you could also cater it and know how to help out people that, that you are, the people that are like you, we also got to be able to turn that switch on and call people that are DCs, DIs, SCs, or whatever. So it's so. important to know where you're at. So to have these assessments. Well, the reason why I bring up like knowing where you're at and what type of personality you have is we're going into mission statements, right? We'll get into the definition of what a mission statement is, but it's important to know who you are and what you stand for. Is that wrong? That's right, right? All right, so we're going to start off with the definition of a mission statement, and I'll let Hector do that first slide before I go into the campaign. So mission statement, a lot of you guys have heard about it, right? Mission statement, you guys heard left and right from big companies, but why Why don't we take the time to think about it in our own business? At the end of the day, we all run a business, right? This is a participation class. So oh, all yeah. there's two people in the no, 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 there's, there's, <laughs> in, uh, yeah. So, so anyways. No, no, you're not. But that, that part of that silence is part of, so you guys can digest that for your, for a second. You know, when there's offers, a lot of people like think of offer silences, like they think is like weird. Like it's actually a part of it. It's a part of teaching and speaking and doing that. It's like you got to be okay with that. When you leave that little bit of silence, less people think about it. But my question again was like, why don't we think of if we run businesses here? Why don't we think about having an emissions thing for ourselves? And the definition is super, super powerful. Uh, and at one point, I'll let you expand on that, but it's a mission statement is a, is a, uh, <clears throat> a conscious statement. Did you, I think you just typed it. You read no, it? it's a concise. Sorry, right. Okay. Right. So a mission oh, statement is a concise it's a statement. It's a concise statement. I'm reading off mine because I think, I think there's a little mistype of A mission statement is a concise statement that encapsulates the fundamental purpose, values, and goals of an organization or individual. Okay? It serves as a powerful declaration that communicates the core essence and aspirations, providing and guiding framework for all activities. So you, one of the words that you guys notice there, it says, for organization or individuals. It doesn't say just any organization or just all organizations. Sometimes when we get into this career, we are business owners and we are, sometimes we start off just alone. So, so yeah. super important, I know Jay wanted to touch on, yeah. on that fact. So it's funny because uh, Hector brought up a good point. We have a mission statement that we want you guys to abide by being a Keller Williams Realtor. You guys are at, at KW because your values align with ours. Maybe you guys share the same mission and I'll remind you guys of the mission statement. Um, it says that the biggest thing is not just organizations, it's individuals. Everything starts with one person. We're going to get into some organizations like really big 
names, but what did Amazon, Amazon start as? Who was the founder of Amazon? Jeff Bezos. Everybody knew that. Right? right? right. Everybody knew it right away. Start off with one person with one mission. So that's what it's important for you guys to know. Who you are now and defining your mission sooner will help you later on when you guys go on the hiring process, which is a career vision process. Because you're going to grow and attract to you. We'll get into later slides, but everything that you stand for is figuring that out. And having that mission statement is, is, is a part of that. So some of you may think, oh, I just started in real estate. I don't even know about the industry. What a perfect time for you to be here, Tyon, because you're new. I'm going to tell you out really quick that you're brand new. Just joined us literally a day ago. Just got your license. It's, it's, it's yeah, you can it. Call you out, but like someone that's brand new still showing up to something like this, that's crucial because before you get into the yeah, how to write a contract and whatnot, you need to figure out who you are as an individual. That's what separates you in this industry is that you're choosing, like Hector said, to build a sales business, not be a paycheck to paycheck entrepreneur. You're not here to be a salesperson at KW because you would have went to a flat fee company. Anyone can teach you how to cut a paycheck for you when you sell a deal, but you guys are here to learn how to build a business, right? Right. right, all right, we're going to the next slide before, here. Before you start, I'm going to add, they have one more thing to say real quick. Something that changed the way I even looked at this. Uh, we've had a coach now, a, a maps coach now for about four years, I want to say. And those of you guys who don't know what a maps coach is, is we basically pay for a professional coach that, that sits with us every single week. And we talk about goals, where we're going, where the business is going, and all that good stuff. Um, now, to get to that point, Obviously, you either have to have some reserves or whatever to where you have because it's not, it's not necessarily the cheapest. We're talking, you know, a thousand bucks a month for to have these coaching calls or whatever. But our first coach, he's he's the one that actually helped us really get back to the mission statement. And I think we took we had him for like six months or a year before he was like, "Hey guys, what are you guys doing?" And then we fought it, we fought it, we fought it, because like, like Jay said, a lot of us start and we're like, we don't want to think about mission statement. I'm, I'm just trying to get paid right now. You know, I'm just trying to pay the bills. I'm trying to get my, pay my car. I'm trying to get you know, my car from getting repoed or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I can say that because I was there. Right? I was there to where, you know, been in tight spots. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's important to get that, get that framework done now. But where I was headed is, is uh, I don't forget, someone from Family Reunion when you told me this. And you guys want to write this down. It says, so the importance of mission is, is super, super, having a mission is super important because the, at the end of the day, the purpose of a business is profit, but the mission could be something else. Because, I'm gonna say it again, the purpose of business is profit, but the mission could be something else. And when I heard that, it absolutely flipped, flipped the way I thought about it. Can you repeat it over time? The purpose of business it's profit, but it's mission could be something else. So at the end of the day, we want, yeah, we want to make money when we profitable, but it doesn't have, that's what you see, you will see right now, we're just gonna go into it. Some of these missions have nothing to do with, with money, but you still need it to keep on going. So take the time to do it now and think about it. It might not be perfect, because it could just be a rough draft and eventually you'll, you'll change that. But like, it's kind of, it's kind of makes sense like that because I just came back from watching leadership, right? And the, the speaker, John Deloney, has a podcast. If you guys haven't, John Deloney, write that down. He speaks a lot about like anxiety and stress and dealing type of stuff in business. A lot of anxiety is being treated with medications these days, right? But do you guys know that anxiety is just a smoke alarm for our bodies? It's a showing that our environment around us, it's a warning sign. Anxiety is a warning that are like we have a bad feeling about a place that we're in or we're anxious about our rooms being a mess your cars are whoever's had anxiety about their car being a mess when you're driving right or who's sat in a room and it's a mess and you get to clean up and you do nothing about it who's been there mm -hmm. your bodies and your minds are the same way with your business mm -hmm. if you guys don't have clarity and cleanliness and a cl clarity is everything i'm gonna say clarity is everything and if you don't have clarity in your own business you are going to be paycheck to paycheck or just Struggling along. Having a mission statement really does help you in the long run. We'll get into it. What was the name just, again? John Deloney. You just reminded me of dishes in my sink. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. But you guys, we're not telling you like this is this is priority. Creating a little bit of clarity and being visiting base camp again. You guys have heard me use the analogy of uh, climbing Mount Everest. There's base camp. You have to get a base camp, go up and come back down and revisit your base camps. This is the foundation of who you are, and you're going to come back to this whenever it's time to reevaluate your teams your growth and what your goals are in real estate. All right? So you guys know the KW The Lakes one, right? Let's, you guys remember this one? To build careers worth having? 
This is worth owning, lives worth living, experiences worth giving, and legacies worth leaving. And I do know for a fact that KW's been able to do that. We had a brilliant example of that. His name's written on the wall behind me, Phil Williams. He definitely left a legacy worth leaving and built a huge foundation here at KW, right? Mm -hmm. And thanks to our profit share system here, his wife has money for the rest of her life because of profit share, because of agents like you. Having his, he was clear on his mission. His mission actually is the same one that we use here for KW. He would bring this up. And that's something that we have to think about ourselves. This is ours as KW, and this is something that, would you guys agree that we try to deliver this for you guys here at KW? Yes. Right? All right, we're gonna get into something else. Hector um, Gutierrez and his team, they have a full MVVBP. We're gonna get into what that is. The, the point is that you guys cannot have your vision and your values and perspectives completed without knowing what your mission is. If you don't have a clear mission in mind, you're not going to know which step to put it with the other, right? So everything leads to another. We're, we're going to get into that. So Hector, you guys want to go over your... Yeah, I'll make it super quick. So this is kind of... I'm a big believer of not having to reinvent the wheel. I, if, if there's a way for me not to spend too much time in like making everything new, why not? I just based, A lot of us look familiar to like KWs, but we change it... Work. We, we changed it to our to where where we see ourselves what stands for us so our mission um it used to be something different completely different and then this new coach told hey this is let's work on it what do you what inspires you guys and we've basically seen a track record of okay people that we meet what what do we stand for as a guitarist team right and this encapsulates exactly what our team stands for the mission is to inspire and empower individuals to see more opportunities and possibilities within themselves so what that means to us is like whenever we meet someone and junior that's generally showing up, like we want to pour back into them. We want to, we want to, people at this office have said this a lot of times, we want to leave people better than how we found them. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what we truly believe in our team. That's the way we like, the people that are in our team is because we believe that we can help them and they can help us. It's a two way street. It's not, hey, you can only help us, blah, blah, blah. It's no, it's how can we pour back into them, you know? So we just took the time to like think of the whole thing. We're like, if we're gonna take time to to make this, let's do let's do the whole the whole thing. So we don't have to come back to it. Now keep in mind this is this is where we're at now. Later on, it's gonna change. Yeah, of course it could definitely change, but this is where we're at now. Our mission is to be the, the trusted real estate team for you and your family for generations to come. Our values are exactly the same as Keller Williams, God Family the Business. Our beliefs are the path taken up for clients and professionals alike to succeed. And you have three little bullet points there. Live with integrity, think in abundance, and know your worth. Oh. And, and then finally, um, and finally, our perspective is as a production team, we prioritize service, productivity, profitability by thinking like a top producer, acting like a trainer consultant, and delivering exceptional results to our clients. So we just took that time to elaborate and make it, okay, this, this is where our business is going, this is where we want to be. So whenever we go to hire someone, whether personality or culture, we, we put it up like a, a screen. Like, does this person match up with where we're headed? And let me let me ask you guys something. What do you guys think of Hector and his team seeing this? What would you guys say if I came in and hear a buyer's perspective for you guys? Absolutely professional. Absolutely professional, right? He shows up with a listing saying, hey, we're going to get into your price right now, Mr. Seller. This is what I stand for. Because there's different personalities. Not everyone's going to be a high D like Hector and I. Like, I, I am silly and fun like you said in the beginning, but when it comes to business, I don't mess around. I'm very direct. You guys have seen me in business mode, right? But like the thing is, everyone is like that. So some people are going to take the time to want to know what we're about. And this is something that they do and they send ahead of time before it gets there so they can read up on what they stand for. So like she said, it's professionalism and you stand out. I know that working with the Gutierrez team, that you're going to inspire me and, and provide me opportunities and possibilities within myself. I know that working with you, I'm going to build well. Yeah. Right? So um, one of the things that, I mean, yeah. When we send something out to a like, listing appointment, this is they get this in, a, in our packet. That is in the front. Like, this is what our team stands for. But when they read what we stand for, one, like they know, okay, we, we're professional. But one of the things that stands out, you know, many different things are going to stand about our team. But one of the things that, when you think of budget, budget real estate services, do you think we're going to be a discount team? Yeah. Know your work. No, but we also have to show up, and I have to show up when I get there. I have to prove why we're even worth what we're charging. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's just that just goes back to know your worth, not just with like money, but also know your worth with like your mental health. No one's gonna be you know 
talking down on us, that kind of thing. So we're even playing. Good. So you guys can see that when Hector and Aurora, and Aurora they built this, they built it for themselves, husband and wife team, correct? And now they're hiring to this. Not just that, not only are they hiring to this, they're attracting clients to this. So it's not only the, the mission statement shouldn't just speak to me as a potential buyer and the team should speak to the buyer in general purchasing a home from that, correct? So I'm gonna we're gonna have this cool neat thing. I want you guys to say the logo that you see, and then I want you guys to say what are they known for. And Hector's gonna discuss what they're known for this company. Ready? You guys know this company? What is it? What are they known for? Why are they closed on Sundays? Next, keep going, keep going. Chicken. Faith. Faith in God. What else are they known for? Employees. How about their employees? The staff. What is the staff known for when you go? My pleasure. There you go. So my pleasure. They're closed on Sundays, but why are they closed on Sundays, right? So Hector's going to read the mission statement. So someone already said it earlier. A couple of people said because of God, right? They're a faith-based company. So right in their mission says to glorify, right in their mission statement, right? This is something that obviously in, in corporate America is not really seen. So the fact that they have it, there's pretty cool. To glorify God by being faithful steward of what is entrusted to us, to have a positive influence on all who come in contact with Chick-fil-A, and to live out our purpose and honor to its truest legacy. We are focused on creating culture of care at the support center in our restaurants, uh, at the support center and in our restaurants. There you go. Yeah. So reading that, when you read the mission statement, what do you guys hear in it? God, coming from service, right? Mm -hmm. All that good stuff. So what do you guys think? To have a positive influence on other coming contact with Chick-fil-A. That's what stood out to me. Because you guys go there, you get my pleasure. Are they ever in a bad mood there? No. Are they happy, smiling teens? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yes, they really is, right? All right, I'm gonna go into this one. What is this? Netflix. Uh, Netflix. Netflix, right? <laughs> Doo -doo -doo. No, okay, I should have the sound going on, right? <laughs> so what is like Netflix known for? What do they do in this industry? Who was all like me remembers how Netflix first started? It used to come to where? In the? Mailbox. Mailbox, Mailbox right? Who are they known for now? Stream room. Streaming, right? What can you do on Netflix? Can you watch whatever you want when you want? Yes. Right? Let me read their mission statement. So at Netflix, we want to entertain the world. Whatever your taste, and no matter where you live, we give you access to the best in-class TV series, documentaries, feature films, and mobile games. Our members control what they want to watch, when they want to watch it, all in one simple monthly subscription. Is this not what they stand for? Is it not what they're known for? Right? So it's, it's awesome, right? And then I know for a fact that that's true. That's a simple thing. So this next one, who knows this one? Who doesn't know this one? Domino's. <laughs> Domino's, right? So besides reading, I'm gonna read Domino's mission statement and Hector's gonna bring up a, a fact about what their business is taking over in the industry. So Domino's believes in doing the right thing, putting people first, creating inspired solutions, championing our customers and growing and winning together. Where did you talk about pizza there? Not at all. But is it something that they're known for doing? They are. Because what do they do now? What are they known for? Have to, did you guys know that they became the number one name in pizza now? Number one? We are number one yeah. worldwide. They're number one worldwide. Who was the number one before them? Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut. In the 90s, Pizza Hut was everywhere. Yeah. Right? And then Domino's just freaking changed their, what do they do to their crust? They what freaking, do do it? they added butter or whatever, yeah. they changed the crust. They changed their perspective. <laughs> they changed their because perspective. Because they went, they went from a pizza company to now claiming they're a technology company. They just so happen to sell pizza. Sounds like us. We're a technology company, KW. We say we're a technology company that happens to sell real estate. They are a technology company that happens to sell pizza. Mm -hmm. Right? It's a little bit more eye opening. Because what do they do when you order pizza? Who's ordered Domino's before? So what do they have now, Hector? What do they have now? What do they have? What do they have? You can use what we have. I know what is on there. What do they create? The what first ever what? The, the menu? Tracker. It's a tracker. tracker. They created the first ever tracker. I can see when my pizza is going in the oven. Oh, when yeah. it's out for delivery. Even though we all know that it's just automated, because you go up and aim my order grade, I was spreading the oven. So, you know, but. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but still, it's not, it, it gives an illusion that the customer is in control and seeing that. Not just that, that's kind of creating an expectation of you. We're no longer wondering on when is my pizza coming, or what the heck, where is it coming? You go to your little tracker and it gives you the illusion that it's still being baked. They probably even haven't put it in the oven yet, but it gives us the illusion that's being baked. 
And then something you guys have to do with your buyer's consultations and your listing presentations is setting a standard, mm -hmm. setting an expectation. Set the expectations so that we're not blowing up the pizza spot saying where's my pizza. That eliminates that. So how can you set your own mission and your own perspectives when you're sitting at a listing or when you're sitting in front of a buyer? What are you saying in front of them? What are you stating? Are they going to still blow you up in the transaction because you didn't set the expectations properly of how long this West Bay takes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> are you, is that what's going on? Are they blowing you up because you guys didn't deliver that accurately? Letting them know, hey, it's going to take a six weeks or something and you're back? So that's something for you guys to think about. They are eliminating that with this tracker. And how can you do that just by simply speaking or including it in your statement or where we stand for? And this is another thing to think about. Did anything else want to add that? No. All right, clarity and focus. Mm -hmm. I'll let you take over this one. So another, like, I guess you could do a, a break down to like four different points of why why you even have a mission statement and how what that is going to help you guys in your business. Uh, one of the things, obviously, clarity and focus. A mission statement brings clarity to the, to the purpose and direction of an organization or individual by clearly identifying the why. How many people ever why big whys? Right. Instead of why. Right. Behind your existence, a mission, a mission statement acts as a compass guiding decision making, decision making, resource allocation, and prioritization of efforts. Mm -hmm. Ever since I've, we've taken the time to create our mission statement, like we use that as a perfect as a compass of where we're like. Does it make sense to hire this person? Does it make sense to to start this initiative with these leads? How many of you guys as real estate get calls all the time saying, "Hey, listen, we have." My name is Hector with uh, Baba Ba Leads. I'm calling you because we have a great opportunity to get leads, you know, yeah. from so on and so forth. Yeah. Okay. Everybody does, right? Yeah. So I mean, I reflect. Well, does that make sense with my mission right now? Oh, it doesn't. I'm oh, sorry. It doesn't. I just shouldn't tell them. But you know what? What we have right now, it doesn't. Out, it doesn't fall within where where our business is going. And that's, that's very. I'm so polite. Like I appreciate the hustle, but I'm a cold caller myself. So I don't, I don't just tell them to like, you know, kick rocks, but I tell them that it doesn't fall within a mission right now. Yeah. And it's, it's, a, it's a compass for what you guys do because if I were to try to join, the, the, even KW, you guys know where values are got found within business. And there's a lot of people that don't believe in that. You guys know we say spirituality, whatever it is that you believe in. But if I am an atheist and want to join the Gutierrez team and say, I don't care about your prayer time, or learning about where your values stand for, you think he's gonna let you be part of his team? No. No. And it's nothing against me. It's just about what they align with and what their values are, what their mission is. If their mission is to help people build wealth and I want them to become a flat fee, hey man, let me charge one percent. Can I join your team? I'm a one percenter. I'll charge one percent listings. Can I get there? Does that align with their mission? No. What they stand for? This is a compass for you too. You are building the foundations of where you guys want to be. You guys have to begin now with the end in mind. And I tell them all the time, I don't care if you've been in the industry for over 20 years, you're always visiting base camp. So it's now, right? Who's been in license for over five years in this room? There you go. Do you guys agree something to the revisit your base camp or revisit where you're at? For sure. You create a new pathway? Mm -hmm. You can always do it. That's the best thing about life is that you can always decide when to change it. The best thing about the business, you can always decide I don't like my logo. I'm going to redesign it. There's no one telling you you have to stay where you are, except yourselves. Yes. Let's face it, it. The one thing that we, that we have certainty in this business is change. Yeah. So sometimes we got to go back to the drawing board, right? What's working on that market isn't going to work on this market. We're seeing that right now with the shift. You know, what was working before, a year ago even, isn't working now. So now we got to pivot and shift, say this is what's working now. Okay, let's, this is working, this is not. Let's take the gas off of that and move it over here. You know? Or people do that for their clients. They'll change and shift their clients financially, but they don't take the time to do it for their own businesses. Mm -hmm. Don't take the time to do it for your own selves. Like this is, you are the foundation of yourself. Who wants to be pounding or door knocking at 87 years old? Who wants to be door knocking at 90? <laughs> I'm being honest. Who wants to be door knocking at 90 years old? Who wants to be cold calling at 90? I'll call it If I'm able to, I would do it just because I won't be on board. <laughs> if I'm able to. But the reality is, like, a lot of us have bigger goals in mind. Like, yeah. No one wants to be pounding the pavement. Correct. We all say that we got into this industry for what? Flexibility and money. Financial flexibility. Schedule. Like, but then you guys can't even control your own schedules because you fail to know what you stand for. Mm -hmm. Even when you guys are doing your calendars and time blocking, you're prioritizing what you, what you you're prioritizing what you believe in to be important, correct? 
You have to do that for your business. Like, what is your business? What do you stand for? What do you find important? That's it. It's a basis. I can look at his calendar and know that everything that they do aligned with their mission of helping buyers and sellers, not just that, um, a legacy for themselves. And I know that by looking at their calendars and the time blocks. I already know what classes that they're going to, not just because he's my LC too. I know what trainings they're going to go to next. And does that align with their mission? It absolutely does. You guys read, you read it earlier. Does that align with his mission? Right? If his thing is to build a healthy lifestyle for himself, that aligns with that too. So I'm just saying, it goes all ties in together. Makes sense? Who's the next one Jay? I know. Let's do it. All right. Strategic decision making, right? So mission statement serves as a strategic tool. That's what it is. It's a tool for decision making. It provides a framework for evaluating opportunities. Kind of like we keep talking about opportunities. It's not just opportunities for who you hire. It's opportunities for yourself. Am I going to go speak on a panel with these people that are going to sell a scam like class at the end of it? Like they're doing a fix and flip scam class, pay for my course for a hundred bucks and I'll tell you how. Does that align with who I am as an opportunity? No, that's not opportunity, right? Is me speaking on a panel inspiring young women an opportunity? Yes? Yeah. Yes. Because that aligns with who I am. So right? So now we're gonna get into this next part. So not just opportunities, products, and initiatives, but it's gonna align your choices with organizations. And are the people that I'm partnering with, am I sending at the lender that I'm working with? Are they doing this for the right reasons? What is their purpose? The title rep that I use. Every single company, the home inspector, are they there to just like rip it off and be rinky-dink jobs? Or is this a company I align myself with? Think about that. If you guys are building business-to-business -business referrals and connections with the doctor's office, what they stand for doesn't align with what you stand for. It's things to think about, because with me, my job as a TL is to attract talent. There's a few brokers out there in town, no offense, that I, I do not think follow KW values I wouldn't want to partner with. Because after having communication with what they stand for, what they are aligned with, it doesn't align with our values and our mission statement. Because regardless of where we're at in the area, I follow our mission statement, our values here at KW. So not everyone aligns with that. And that's another thing that goes into like organizations and being mindful of who you guys partner with. Whatever you want to stand for, just remember you're affiliate. How many times do your agents or clients think that you're the lender? Or they think that your lender did this on your team and you have to explain, oh my gosh, they don't work for me, they're a different organization. How many times have you guys gotten that? Yeah. Quite a bit because whoever you guys recommend is a reflection and extension of you. The TC that are talking to your clients, it's an extension of you. Mistake? Is that wrong or right? That's right. So think about this, you guys. Like, is everyone that I'm using to represent myself, me, J. Chacon Group, myself, do they align with who I am? Right? And in reality, everybody has a team, right? Even if you're a solo agent, you're going to have, like, does yep. your termite person yes. mess with that? Does your home inspection company match with that? Does your lender, does your title rep, mm -hmm. right? Does your, just the, the, if you do like this, like not some kind of, but people that you work with that you yeah. refer out business to, are they going to have the same mindset as you? Or are they going to, like, can you confidently give people that you refer your team out to clients? You because, if, them. because if they mess up or they do something like just mess up to that client, mm -hmm. you know, it, it just looks bad on you. Like even say like if you send them a, if I send them a, a shady cleaning company that I've never met with or known in my life, they're sending clean around private possessions. Like you have to think about this. It's an extension of you. So, anyways, and I'm gonna finish this up. Uh, so it says organizations and individuals that can ensure that their efforts are in line with their long-term goals. Everything is starting with the end goal in mind, right? I'm excited for you guys to be here. Um, just so you guys know, you're not going to leave this room today without doing an activity at the end. Fair? Fair. Fair. Oh, for sure. Yeah. All right. I'm excited to help you guys. Next, we've got identity and culture. Woo! So the mission statement reflects the identity and values of an organization or individual. It identifies their core beliefs, principles, and aspirations. Uh, it, by clearly articulating these elements, the mission statement shapes the organization's or personal culture attracting like keyword like-minded individuals, right? And fostering the sense of purpose and belonging. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't like, of course, you want to have people of all types, of different backgrounds in your in your organizations, right? And in your teams. But at least the way I think about it is, I want everybody on my team to have to have the drive to grow, mm -hmm. right? I don't want someone that's stagnant that's been in the business for too long and. And they're just like they're they're trying to leave. They're trying to exit out of the business. Now I'm trying to get into business with people that yeah. that hey they still see they still got a lot of, of track left on the runway. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like Sophia says that she's looking for people that are on the sunrise of their career instead of their sunset. 
Yeah, yeah, because I, because I feel like I'm on the still on the rise of it. So I want people that are same, <laughs> that still have that same drive, you know. Yeah. So everyone in, in the team had, had attracting like-minded individuals, and mm-hmm. whenever you guys get to that point of hiring, uh, Keller Williams is. I've never seen the hiring process like at Keller Williams. It's bar none. It's it's nuts. I've never seen it in my life, and the way they do it is amazing because yeah. you get to know your your potential uh, hire um, on a deeper level. You get, them, you get to know what's, what drives them, right? Not just, and then you would find out, does it make sense for them to, you guys to get in business together? You know, because you don't, you don't want to get in business with just anybody. I've read this, I read, I was listening to a book, I read, now we're now we so used to saying reading, we know listen to it. So I was listening to this book called um, uh, The Way of the Shepherd. How many of you guys have listened to that? The Way of the Shepherd. The Way of the Shepherd. The the Shepherd. So it's a, it's a really good book, it's a really short list, it's like a two hour book. And it talks about it's better to get find someone with drive than to find someone with a lot of talent but it has a bad attitude. Yeah. yeah. You will backtrack your business because then it will spread throughout your organization. Mm-hmm. So if you have one person, I mean, we see it all. Let's be real. We see it all times in different organizations and businesses where we have one person with a crappy attitude. And they start rubbing off on another one, and it just spreads. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. So it's better to find someone that's driven and has a drive. That maybe doesn't have the most skills, but you can still ship them in there. Then have someone that's really naturally gifted, but they're actually just junk. That kind of brings me to another point that uh, that you guys are familiar with sports, right? So some of us, right? So in basketball, they're only as good as what their key and star player. In soccer, they're only as good as their weakest link, right? When you're in sales, what are you, basketball or soccer? You're only as good as your weakest link. You are. Because you are, that's true. So in, in sales, you're kind of softer a little bit. You are as good as your weakest link because you are the MVP. The star of the show is what we call the rainmaker here. So the rainmaker could be fantastic, but if they had the wrong admin, what's gonna happen to your business? It's gonna fail. It's softer because you're only as good as your weakest link. So it doesn't matter if I'm a superstar and the rest of my team isn't, I'm gonna tank. So everyone on the team has to be a star player in soccer. You guys aren't familiar with that. It's a different little fun way to think about. We're in this play. We're going to win championships for ourselves. But it's kind of cool. I like analogies. I'm going to throw those out there. I'm going to keep the fun and excitement. And Ellie, you touch on motivation. Yeah. So motivation and inspiration. So a compelling mission statement serves as a powerful source of motivation and inspiration. Remember, it's not up to us to motivate people, but it's up to us to bring out that motivation, right? So having a good mission statement should empower those around you. Like, I love KW because I did run through that mission statement that's written on that wall when you guys walk in here three times throughout the office when you walk throughout it. Stands for something I want. I do want to leave a legacy. Like, um, I will say that about the PSI seminars. You guys have heard this before, but you guys know. Can you guys name your grandmas or your grandfathers? How about your great grandma or great grandpa? Ooh. How about your great great grandma? So, how many legacies or generations are you away from being forgotten? And how can we prevent that? You think he'll ever be forgotten? Absolutely not. He'll never be forgotten here. His legacy is printed on the wall because forever people are going to ask, who is that guy? Mm-hmm. And we're going to have a story on the plaque in the front, right? So that's just a thing to think about. A good mission statement is going to live beyond you and surpass you. It's going to go onto a team. It's going to inspire others and motivate. Let's get back into this. Sorry. <laughs> it infuses work with purpose and meaning, instilling a sense of pride and commitment among individuals. I feel so proud to be here because of that. Isn't it awesome that you guys are part of an office that wants you guys to build wealth for yourself? That wants you guys to have a legacy? That wants you guys to give back to others, right? And have a life that's worth living? Like a life that's worth living is not a life that you have to pick work over your family. That you have or social, like that's not a good life, right? Having that balance, being able to go to Puerto Vallarta because his business is still moving forward. That's a life worth living. And it's not too late to create that for yourselves, all right? So anyway, so a wall, let me finish reading this. <laughs> a wall to find mission statement can uplift and energize driving individuals or organizations to overcome challenges to reach the full potential. What's really cool about this is that we get excited and energized over KWs, and now you can get excited over your own. It's up to you to create your own. I know that there you go over there is every meeting. Can you let them know what you guys do in the mornings? Yeah, so when we start our meetings, we, we go through typically like our files that are going current escrows, possible business, and then uh, before our prayer, we we go through and we read our mission, some of the mission, some of the revision, but we say it three times out loud to remind ourselves, okay, why are we here? This is this is where business is going, this is why this is why we're here. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just want to share real really quickly. 
you, you gotta be careful when when you hire the right people because they will push you <laughs> in a direction of like growing. And what I mean by that is this: when we got in business with Brenda, and I don't even like to say the word, but you you start changing your language. Even with, like maybe it's a cold hard thing. I don't know. Maybe it's just like being and reading more and like being around people. But like there's words I don't use anymore. So when when I say oh, I never say someone's my employee. I always say, I'm in business with them, mm -hmm. right? Because we were both in business with each other. But anyways, where we're going with that is that Brenda, our mission is to inspire and empower individuals to see more opportunities and possibilities within themselves, cool. right? I know that like that. Why? Because we repeat it every morning. But when when Brenda, when we got in business with Brenda, she, um, just a little bit about her, She she's coming from a lending background. So she was a loan officer before. She, she just didn't like where she was at, okay? Uh, she was not a person to work out. This is just her words. She can, I'm not, I'm not just talking, right? But this is her saying, she did not like to work out. She didn't like to read. She didn't like, she was kind of in a, in a place where it's kind of like a bad environment. So she was a little negative or whatever. Mm -hmm. And in being with us, being around Aurora, mostly Aurora, because this is her and Aurora in the office. I get a little corner desk, whatever, but it's okay. <laughs> but um, he gets a corner. I got a little corner. <laughs> but she, Aurora motivated her to do 75 hard. And for those of you guys who know what 75 hard is, it's a 75 day long challenge to where you gotta you gotta work out twice. You gotta drink a gallon of water. You got to uh, stay, follow a diet. Take a progress picture. You gotta t read 10 pages of a self development book. Oh, yeah, self development non fictional book. And here she is, she's already completed her 75 days, uh, like a week and a half ago. And she transformed the way she looks, the way she feels, and it, it totally aligns with our mission. Mm -hmm. And now I feel like to my language like a little, because I haven't even done it myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know? We have Twitter because he hasn't done it, and she has. So, so I'm actually doing it right now because Woo! she inspired me to do it. Oh, process it's so intense for you guys and uh, don't worry I'm gonna teach this for you guys later this year the, the, the actual course if you guys want to learn how to hire but it's a six-step hiring process six interviews consecutively and two of them dig deep into people and whenever we showed them and showed Brenda her their mission statement she was inspired she was motivated and being part of that team and knowing what she represents is what caused this so because Hector and Aurora made the decision to sit down and take time to figure out what they want to do and create for themselves, look at what they've done. Just look at that. Now they have Jeremy. I never had to fight him to the nail to make an I say hire, but now he has that guy. Now he's inspiring Jeremy to read. And this guy said, I don't like reading books unless they're like nonfiction. I mean, fictional. But now he's inspiring them to read nonfiction books. So you're not just creating this life for yourselves. You're creating this for potential hires around you. Those of you that have kids, maybe your kids one day take over your business. You never know. Look at me. I'm taking over. <laughs> so it's kind of what's as far as our teams and the MVP that I follow is KWs. And I know I inspire realtors daily to help you guys live a better life, to build a legacy for yourselves. And that's the mission that we push for ourselves here. Who's in the the, summer, the June Shred Challenge? Raise your hands. Come on, yes you are. You're raising his way in there. Right? Summer is a little late this year, so. It's right. not, to me, to me, Aurora, our summer is August because we're Leo's, and the whole world we're all on our birthday, so that's my summer, right? So to me, I'm ready for summer, which is August. That's a Leo, so. We're the best, you know what I'm saying? So being the best, I'm not Leo. Yeah, so just so you say my summer is August. I'm Leo too, so I get it. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why we don't like. We're good. We're gonna look good in August. Well, that's my summer, y'all. I know a lot of these have kids, so it's summer for you, but. It's just me. My summer's August. You guys can choose when your summer is too. Never too late. Your summer could be in October, in December. Y'all can always go vacation to somewhere sunny, okay? So what we're gonna remind you guys of is this is short and sweet because the majority of the class is gonna be spent hands on with you. You guys are gonna spend the next 15 minutes or so um, kind of by jotting down what you stand for and what you want to create. The experience you want to create not just for yourselves but others around you and your and your like little mini families that you have, so your teams. So what do you stand for for yourself? What do you want to project to your clients, to those people that look you up, and potential buyers agents, showing agents, and people around you? So I want to remind you guys, you do not do real estate. You're not just a mom, you're not just a daughter, you're 
You're not just a dad. You're not just a grandma, grandpa. You're not just a realtor. Like, what exactly are you? It's up for you to find out. So you do not do real estate. What do you do? So if I ask you, what do you do? You better be real estate. That's not what you do. What do I do? I'm part of the next generation of mega eight That's what I do. Oh, and I sell house alongside. I'm just kidding. <laughs> But it's kind of a different way to think about it. So if I said to her, hey, what do you do? I don't have an elaborate answer like you have, but. No, you don't either. I'm like, what do you do? Like, you don't, you empower her, you said you empower her. Change lives, man. Change lives. That's what I told it's Jeremy, too, right? when, to real estate. Yeah, what I told Jeremy when he's cold calling, he's like, he's, his background is telemarketing. So he's, his, his job, sole job is to be on the phones. Mm -hmm. And he's coming from, from calling uh, for a car insurance. Hey, your car insurance is up. I've been trying to reach he's you. He's the Yeah, he's one of them. Hey, your car insurance right? is up. <laughs> so it was more like telemarketing. So I'm like, we had a good amount of that mindset. And hey, like, you're not really calling for car insurance. Like, what you're doing, you're changing. You're, you're changing lives. You're changing lives. And that's when you got to get that mindset. Because when you're calling, you know, in, like, the other person that picks up, you can potentially change their lives or, or one of their family's life. Your whole demeanor when you call them is going to be different. You know? Yeah. So that's I, super, I super that. important. I love I'm, I'm so passionate about it. Who was in the room with me and I recruited you? Everyone here? Can you guys tell I really care about you? Like, I really care about each and every one of you. Like, I really genuinely believe that KW can change your life. Like, this office can change your life. I believe with all my heart. That's why I'll never go do what I do somewhere else. I'm just going to go back into sales if I don't want to be sales anymore. Because I don't believe in other companies. I believe in what we stand for, what we have to. I believe in the vision. I believe in this. I know that we're a tech company. I, I, believe, I believe that when I sit in front of a, a buyer, I believe that I wholeheartedly have the best intentions for them. I know for a fact, and that's why when I'm calling people, when I'm talking to them, when I'm sitting with them, I believe it. When Hector's sitting in front of a listing, uh, in front of a client, he knows without a doubt his numbers that he can get that seller the most amount of money for his property. He knows for a fact he can help change their lives through real estate. And not just that, when he's recruiting to his team or growing and expanding it, he knows he can change lives through that too. So what do you believe in and what do you stand for? You do not do real estate, what do you do? Please write it down, because I mean everybody in this room share, and as a gift for sharing, you're gonna get to the, key, the KPA email to you guys, okay? So once again, forget, don't forget to sign in with your email if you're present, so I can give that gift to you guys. Um, the gift is that you have to take it, you have to sit down with me in a coaching consultation, so I can go over what the KPA is. You wouldn't know how to read it, like you just got it, you're like, okay? So I will sit down with you guys for 30 minutes each, 30 minutes max, sorry. And then you guys get to say, so it was max, all right? But it's super going to know where you're at. And um, it's really important to know where you are and where you, where you stand for now to know where you're going. It's kind of if I don't win myself, I'll never know what progress I made, right? If you don't check in with yourself and your business, you're not going to know where you're going. There's people that sometimes have to revisit their mission, revisit their vision and their perspective, and that's okay. But your mission is something that you should hold quality. That thing should never change, honestly, your mission. Yeah, it, it, it took us forever. Like we, we we did a class when we did ours initially and we did like a rough graph and we didn't touch for like a year or over that. And then it still we brought a push butter up to us again and then it still took months after we brought it up to us to really take a time to sit down because we think it's a total waste of time, but it's not. It's not a waste of time. It's actually you're investing into your future. Especially um, you know, this there, someone said a, a couple years ago says you gotta build you gotta build better before you build bigger. So you gotta mm -hmm. kind of know your foundations and then, then okay, now I can actually know where we're headed, a little more clarity. Kind of like a jack of all trades, master of none. Mm -hmm. Like if you're not, people building multiple, going to multiple avenues and, I know you guys see them on YouTube and your TikToks that are one day doing investment classes and the next day short property, like be looking for stats and they're not killing it either, you know? Don't be that person. So I'm gonna let you guys sit down in silence and just really jot down some ideas of what you stand for. If you guys wanna just uh, share, I'll give you guys what, a couple minutes, some minutes? About five minutes, I used 15, but I think 15 is too much. Okay, I put five. Five, five, okay. You guys, five minutes. I modified it. Okay, five minutes, jot down what you stand for, and I want everyone to share. We're short, sweet, to the point. Oh, I know you all appreciate that, right? I appreciate that. <laughs> I, can long, some, I can do a long class. Mm -hmm. The only long class I can do is if it's most people. Oh, we're up. Okay. 
we're, we're being watched. Is that what you're telling me? I think a big why or uh, why your purpose could be, you know, a lot of us have families, we have children, it could be financial freedom, it could be giving, giving an experience to your family or yourself or your spouse or whatever. Um, so really dig deep on what, like why you're doing this. Because um, I think money is just very, very big thing to write down. Because, you know, money comes and goes, but like, what are you doing with that? What can you potentially do with that money? Like Gary Keller says, you know, money is good for the good it can do. You know? If you want to have a whole bunch of money, you don't know what to do with it, then what good is it? So yeah. it's just kind of a, I know it's a, it's a wide question, but like, why do you do what you do? Okay. It's not just money sometimes. And I see y'all sometimes working, willing to go for your commission and make something work because you guys love the client's story. Can you guys know that your clients, is, they probably share a two bedroom apartment with four kids, but why do you do it? Because you're not doing it for money, are you at that time? You're not. So why do you do what you do? It's people need. Yeah, so you want to help people people need. And so for me, having, and I'm going to write this down, I'm not saying what it is, but but I wrote down words so that I can put together the thoughts. But I love hospitality. That's why I love what I do. I do from estate sale, mopping, windows, whatever it takes, because I'm service oriented. That's why I love this business. I love helping people from the, you know, the meet and greet all the way to the close. I just, I love it. So now I gotta put that into it. How did she do so far? Saying it out loud. She did great. And I'm asking as a question: Do you believe her? Yeah. Yeah. She had it said it with all that conviction. I can tell it's genuine. It's genuine. So who else wants to give it a shot? I want everyone's gonna talk. Sorry, folks. But I just say what I do. Then you go what Okay, what I do is I my church, I, I lead worship, I play guitar and all that. But I afterwards I'm crazy. I serve food to our church. Sometimes I cook it. I love the hospitality and real estate to me is hospitality driven. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Hospitality to your homeownership journey. Yeah, absolutely. Boom, tagline. Boom, yeah. My like <laughs> Next, tie on back there. What do you, why do you want, why do you in real estate? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, the second day. <laughs> I'm just trying to make some money, man. He is. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm talking So it's just one. Yeah, what, what, what do you stand for? Well, as of now, I'm just really just trying to like learn and absorb everything from everybody around me, so that I can get to a point where like I'm financially free, and then I could not only elevate myself but everybody else around me. That is a it's mission good. there, and he knows it day two. Elevate. Exactly. Is it good to know why you're doing this? Because you have so a lot of new agents I talk to you have a license for like weeks or months and don't know where they're going. Now he knows his mission. Your mission is not where maybe his is or mine is. For your mission right now is to absorb everything around you so that you can be financially free so that once you are financially free, you can create opportunities for yourself and others. I'm just repeating what you just said out loud. How does he hear hearing it from me? How does it feel? 
great. Sounds, Sounds great. great. Yeah. That's, you sounded exactly the same way. So there you go. I just I repeated what you said. Just write that down. All right. Charlene. Uh, so I just put like a bunch of kind of words down. So inspire and empower those around me. Um, and so mine is obviously to leave a legacy. So that's a big part of mine. Mm -hmm. uh, but also um, the opportunity to somehow share that with other people so they can also leave a legacy, whether it's building their, you know, their first home, their dream home, their, you know, whatever it might be. So something. So, but, so you're you're inspiring others, right? So you're inspiring others that they know it's possible to create a legacy for themselves to real estate. So now you have to find a way to say that for yourself. But that's what I heard when you said it, and it feels different. I'm gonna repeat what you guys tell me because sometimes it hears it works to hear someone else saying that. Yeah. I'm like, oh my god, that is. I did just say that, but why did I question myself saying that? You have to believe in what you're saying. Don't, that what you just said did not sound silly or don't. It, it, I believe it 100% that you are going to inspire. I love it already. You know why? Because she has her barcode on her sleeve and her logo on her shirt. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> that's someone that's determined to leave a legacy? Yeah. Absolutely. Let me scan your arm for you. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it 100%. Norma? And so, me, I have, you know, it's changed. It does change when you just start to, you know, yeah, it changes. Do the it does change along the line. but. You know, I have said of my purpose, or you know, what I stand for is kind of to help in the journey of, with, with integrity and honesty, and, and to help people empower themselves to know they're able to build generational wealth. Mm -hmm. uh, and at, at this point, is me going back to my past clients and letting them know, like, hey, you already have a couple homes. Let's get to the third one because you have three kids, or whatever <laughs> it is. So that's kind of where my purpose comes for at this point. Yeah. So that's and that's doing that. So building generational wealth, right? Let me share with you guys a little hack. Okay. How many of you guys have heard? I know everybody should chat GPT. Yeah. Okay. Do yourself a favor and like put in like a, write me a small mission statement with these are the values, blah blah blah. And maybe don't copy verbatim, but it'll give you some ideas on how to verb, how to put what you're thinking on paper to make sound a little bit, you know, yeah. more creative. Yeah. Yeah. Chat GPT. Yeah. yeah. Chat GPT. Chat Mary GPT. Paul yeah. 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 So that so everything you're saying out loud. Put it to Chat GPT, throw some fancy words in there. Yeah, like you do type in, help me write a mission statement, these are the values of the company, real estate, and boom. Boom, right for you. Yeah, just, just give me the ideas or whatever thoughts you have. And Hector catches me all the time and goes, why did you find the GPT now, right? Yeah. Because all the time I'm like, okay, I want to make something, I just give it like, write me something based on this. And I just like, you know, win win and no, no deal, blah, blah, blah. And then it just, brrr, just starts dropping yeah. all kinds of stuff. Like, you know? awesome. Yeah, and, and then I grab that and I try to put it within my words because I also want it to sound like me. Yeah, yeah. that's a great hat. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I want it to sound like a, you know how a professor put it together. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 Yeah also both points um so the reason why i do this is because i love working with people um especially um i've been working with buyers mostly buyers yeah. so i just love like the smiles at the end of the transaction and um the way that i was able to help them get from you know a to z and i'm a very you know loyal i work with integrity so i make sure that my clients are going to be safe and that's just like just when we close seeing how happy they are how you know um I just love helping people. So that's the reason why I'm doing this, other than being very flexible. Um, there you go. Flexibility. That's a good thing. So you really genuinely enjoy the buying. I process. do. I really do. Like, and I make sure that they're going to be safe, as safe as I can make sure it's going to be possible. You know what? So that's going to probably be a part of your mission statement. Something sure safety safe. or security. Safe. Safe. Yeah. Secure. I have to stay here. I have integrity, loyalty. Yeah. There you I go. And then I love to feed my brain because I love to have answers for my clients, whether it's a listing or a buyer. Like, I need, I hate not knowing the answer, you know? So. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. You're you're an education based. Yeah. You read it down. Education based. All right, Shauna. So um, and honestly, Isaiah. she kind of inspired me. <laughs> uh, hospitality is something that, like, just being you know growing up with just boys in my family, I was always just helping my mom. So for me, it's just that hospitality 
Um, leadership to bring value is another one. Um, and then just kind of like women empower, empowering, you know? So, so I like to do what you do. That's why I like to do what I do. What do you think, Isaiah? That she did? That she inspired you, your mama? Yeah. Yeah. What is your? What about you, Isaiah? What did you, you like, mom working here? Um, I love my mom working here because um, I want her to get money. Buy <laughs> <laughs> <my> toys. <laughs> showing up in our business in our lives and like people that we're around we want to empower we want to make them to self-realize and we not only Alberta but myself even in outside of work people come to us for like advice like marital advice we're talking about different kinds of work like whether uh, investing and we try to help them we help, try to help them turn the perspective of the way they're looking at something so maybe they're looking at it a certain way where there are people are running into a wall and they're like, well, listen, what if you do this or what if you do that? And so many people come to us outside of work that look for advice. And like, okay, well, that's that's the, I guess, a calling that we have. So that's what we put to inspire and empower individuals to see more opportunities and possibilities for themselves. And and although it's not like not a perfect why, she maybe has a why, perfect why. But I, if you ask me, be totally blunt with you guys, I don't I don't how. Sometimes you're, and you know, I, you know, it's funny because I've asked this question because at the TL, I always talk to you guys about a why. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a deep, meaningful why. It's, it's, it's purposeful. It's for you to figure out. It could be the most selfless reason why I want to be a why, but doing that allows me to find my why. Me helping people achieve home ownership, me coaching agents to reach their full potential, funds my why. I never want to be in this type of position ever again or this position ever again. I don't ever want to be that person. I don't want to be this. We all have a story of what we don't want to be. We don't want to come from, we come from either we come from poverty or we see things or we had examples of leaders we don't want to be. So whatever that whatever be some reason can be, it doesn't have to be a deep philosophical meaning. But for him, his why he lets up other people and by doing that he's fulfilled. He doesn't if I had to pinpoint something, it would yeah. be like the satisfaction of seeing someone else, like helping someone get to somewhere. Because, like, yeah, the one's cool, but it's like, okay, cool. You, you almost like you, you get used to it. But when you see someone like grow, in, in an example, for example, is Brenda being a totally different person from when she started with us to now. It's like super inspiring to me and it fulfills both my wife and I. I'm like, dude, like, that was mostly our life that did something so hard. I haven't even done it. But it's just a fact that we're, we're living out what, we, what we're saying that we want to live out, you know? That's a why. Can I hear something? So, yes! <laughs> Woo, special I was guest. listening and I was like, I need to go say something. Come here, Laura. Um, I got something. So, um, so camera. I think that a lot of times, a lot of times when people get asked about their why, I think that a lot of our programming as adults comes in because we don't want to say we're doing it for the money. But the reality is, is that if we're out here to help people, we could go to a, to a nonprofit organization and help people all day long and have way less stress. That's just a reality, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But it's, it's hard to say, well, I'm doing it for the money, right? Because it sounds 
bad or greedy, right? But when we asked Isaiah, he said he wanted money and he wanted toys. <laughs> yeah. Right? Because he doesn't, <laughs> right. he doesn't care. He doesn't care what anybody thinks because he hasn't gone through life the way we yeah. have. Exactly. Right? So so when I think about my wife, and I struggled with this at the beginning because I, I want a really huge house and I really I want there's a lot of things that I want and I used to be embarrassed to say that because I thought it was greedy and then our coach asked me well why do you want that house and I said well my dad passed away my mother-in-law passed away when grandma passes away there's not going to be a house for everyone to meet at and I want a house big enough for both of our families to be there together and I want my house to be that. What do I need to get that? I need a lot of money. <laughs> right? And I want the pool and I want all of that. And I want those things because I want people who are also from Paris to understand that like this little girl from Paris made it and had this house and she did all these things and she helped all these people. So my why is to have all those things so that people can see the possibilities and opportunities within themselves. 